Welcome to Feedback, an on-the-go podcast shining a light on the latest products from the world's top electronic suppliers. Brought to you by Avnet and SupplyFrame. On the Feedback podcast, we ask our guests a series of questions to learn more about the products they specialize in. Today, we are joined by Chuck Cranley, a global product manager at Molex, who shares how the company is charting a path towards the next generation of PCIe technology. Welcome to the Feedback Podcast, Chuck. Could you tell us about your role at Molex? Yeah, it's a pleasure. Uh, Thanks for having me. I've been uh, with Molex now for 10 years uh, in various roles, doing front-end development and uh, as a global product manager, uh, a lot of my time is is more spent with uh, system engineers, design engineers, mechanical engineers. So it's more on the technical side, uh, supporting Intel and our uh, semiconductor efforts and taking the culmination of those sales experiences and and putting it more into a product direct focus. Looking back, how has the technology in your segment evolved in your time at Molex? Yeah, over the last several years, you've seen uh, shifts in, in just requirements from customers, how they're thinking about their architectures, and uh, really the focus today is is more in line with PCI Gen 5 and 112 gig PAM4 applications. Uh, so now people are starting to uh, re- rethink and, and understand the limitations of the legacy uh, architecture and technologies that are available. Could you share with our listeners what types of electronics utilize PCIe technology and in what capacity? Yeah, sure. So uh, when you think PCIe, typically what I try to explain to people is is you think PCIe, you think servers. Uh, so as um, as the technology evolves, as generation over generation happens, uh, you're really driven by the PCI uh, chem connector. It's, it's the connector that's, that's defined by the PCIe SIG uh, and, and committee. So. Since that needs to be backwards compatible, uh, you then have limitations of how far you can enhance that technology. So um, with the legacy product that is driven by the spec, uh, you then need to look at different ways that you can optimize the design. And that's really where where I start coming in with uh, cable products is is we're starting to look at at different ways that you can lay out the uh, the server uh, PCB. So instead of typically doing from a connector to connector or a connector to a paddle card, uh, now you're you're starting to incorporate these cableized solutions. Given your experience, why is advancement in this technology important for your customers? Uh, sure. I mean, outside of the high level uh, where you're improving performance, uh, you're improving your cost and creating design flexibility, you know, kind of the, the umbrella, uh, this really allows uh, customers to, to rethink how they're laying out their servers. So uh, now with the limitations that I was referring to, you're starting to see the need of uh, adding semiconductors, more semiconductors to your design. Um, uh, components like retimers timers uh, are really, you know, in, in essence, like an amplifier of the signal. Uh, but the problem with that is that adds cost, it's adding heat and uh, uh, thermal challenges to the design, and it's taking up board space. Uh, so one of the uh, options that, that we propose and, and that we're actively working with customers on is, is trying to cableize. So you're taking connectors, you take components off the board, you're trying to reduce the or limit the need of retimers, uh, but still maintain this high high performance speeds. In your opinion, how does the near stack PCIe connector system present solutions to engineering challenges? The near stack connector, uh, what that really provides uh, value of is it's taking out uh, an additional PCB that's inside uh, a typical cable assembly that you see uh, out in the market today. Uh, so the, the inception point of, of near stack is starting to happen in PCI Gen 4 and, and now in PCI Gen 5 and beyond, uh, because not only is it a small footprint, uh, but you're removing that, that need for the additional PCB. So it's an additional loss in your, in your signal performance. Uh, the other advantage of NearStack uh, is we can cableize that to our backplanes, uh, for instance, where you can cableize it to other technologies. So it's not just dictated to NearStack, uh, but it's what we call hybrid cables. Uh, so a lot of what I work on now is a backplane, so high density, high signal count connector on one end, and then you'll have multiple NearStacks on the other end. Uh, that allows you to basically group up all your signal contacts uh, that are throughout the uh, various parts of the server and then you cluster them to one uh, connector at the panel and it helps streamline the communication path. How does the NearStack PCIe connector system move PCIe technology towards next generation performance? Yeah, so I think when I really started getting uh, more focused on the data center products, uh, it, was, it was more in that Gen 3 uh, stage. Uh, and at, at that, that point, you really weren't seeing uh, as, as high of a need for cabling. 
Uh, you did have some cables in in within the uh, within the servers, but it, it was for the most part you could do it through uh, through board materials. The challenge we see as we get to Gen 4, now Gen 5 is where we're at now, and, and people are starting to think about Gen 6, is uh, that there becomes limitations of, of how exotic you can be with the PCB material, uh, you know, the performance and loss budgets uh, within those signals uh, becomes more and more critical. Uh, a term you probably hear a lot, uh, latency, uh, is, is also um, you know, a very critical point as, as we continue to grow up. Uh, so as as I mentioned, uh, cabling and hybrid cabling is becoming more and more commonplace. Uh, Gen 6, that, that's going to be even more so. You're, you're going to be, again, seeing a, a rethought of how you go about your architectures. What type of assets or tools does Molex provide to help engineers find the ideal solutions for their designs? Yeah, so the first step would be, uh, and a lot of what I'm spending my time on these days, is uh, doing front-end engagement with customers. So uh, working both myself uh, or bringing along an FAE or uh, one of our engineering uh, counterparts to, to really work with the customer, under, uh, define what their challenges are, um, you know, where are the bottlenecks, how can we provide value to them. Uh, and then from there, we, we work and, and put together proposals, uh, whether that's um, you know, renderings or models, things of that nature that kind of really help put together a, a picture to them of, of what our solution is. Again, about things that, that really weren't included in these designs in the previous generation. So it really helps to, um, you know, as I said, roll up the sleeves and, and provide some visuals uh, with the customer to, to really define what you're proposing. Uh, beyond that, you know, once you get past that front end design, then you're, you're getting into, um, you know, electrical modeling, mechanical modeling, thermal modeling, uh, different values that we have in engineering resource. How does customer feedback influence the development of future products at Molex? Uh, I, customer feedback is, is key, especially in products like hybrid solutions. So it's a new technology. Um, really, you're taking building blocks that either exist or in, or in development, and uh, instead of having them be in more of an off-the-shelf product, you're taking a little bit from uh, from column A, you're mixing a little bit with column B, and you're putting that together and you're taking some of your uh, previous experience of cabling, uh, some mounting and uh, cable routing and wire processing, things done in the past, but you're taking these different technologies and merging them together, like I mentioned earlier, uh, backplane cables or uh, near-stack connectors, things that in the past haven't been together, now you're able to put them together and, and work with the customer to put together a solution meet their specific needs. Thanks, Chuck. It was great talking with you today. The world of electronics is accelerating at an incredible pace, with companies like Avnet and Molex leading the charge into new and exciting product innovations. We want to hear your feedback. Leave your comments and let us know which products you'd like to hear more about on the show. For all the latest in EE news and electronics products, stay tuned to Feedback.